please welcome Jeremy. Um, I didn't say anything yet. Um, thanks, Steff. Thanks. Uh, wow, the the, um, the unorganization of this event is is amazing. I I totally love it. We we're so good here. That's thank you, um, uh, ladies, gentlemen, compañeras, compañeros, uh, amigas, amigos. Um, what? Yes, and dear everyone. We are here in a very strange moment in history uh, that we're uh, sharing together, that we're writing together. Uh, I don't want this to be a talk. Uh, I want to, to, to introduce a kind of a state of where is going on my reflection on some of the issues we're dealing with every day. It's work in progress. There is nothing uh, definitive here. It's version 0, 0.0000 something. And but I want to put a few a few things on the table and that we can discuss that together because I'm now uh, more than ever convinced that this is only by discussing this all together that we may get get to something. Um, we need a, a global strategy to address uh, global attacks on our freedoms, global attacks on what we value and share, uh, global attacks on the very core of technology we use every day. We know that, right? Uh, we've known that for some times. Uh, we've suspected that for some times. But when uh, our courageous young friend uh, Edward started feeding uh, or other friends with information. We, I think, all had this very um, ambivalent feeling. On one hand, we knew, we knew that, right? We knew they were listening everything all the time. We kind of knew it. We were sure of it. We knew, kind of knew. <laughs> and at the same time, our, our minds were all blasted by the amplitude of it, by the deepness of it, by the number of layers, by the ramification. You've all seen the slides where, I mean, beyond Google, Facebook, Apple, and Microsoft, it goes to AT&T, Cisco, uh, Lucent, of course, Motorola, Qualcomm, you name it. We, we've seen that, and our, our minds were, were blasted. And how does this relate to the part where we knew it? What's missing here? Uh, we've been working with technology for, I guess, as long as we remember uh, being able to put our hands on, on buttons and blinking things. Uh, we've been watching those things happen uh, before many others. And still, we're more or less in the same uh, state of not really knowing where we go and not knowing what we'll do from that. I mean, we have uh, here... Uh, one of the highest densities in Europe of X60 enthusiasts, maybe of pond users uh, as well. But we all know that when we are targeted, we are targeted. Thomas Drake told it to us in what, it was 2083, but we knew that already. When you are targeted, you are targeted. So we know that, right? It's as simple as a camera, a laser microphone, and flat array of microphone filming some potato chips, uh, listening to some gyroscope, using some JavaScript, and this and that, and la 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 la. We all know that. When you're targeted, you're targeted. The point is, it's right to be targeted. We, we know we have to do things that will make us targeted. And I wish we all end up on the Cast Iron Club, along with, along with Jake, Julian, and a few others in our club. I hope we do what we have to do in order that we'll be sure anyway that when we're targeted, we are targeted. I think this will take a bit of our worries off our mind when it comes to configuring this new laptop, when it comes to using Tails and the such. And I'm not saying we should stop, on the, on the contrary. What I'm saying is that we've been making technology advance uh, tremendously. We've built uh, GNU and BSD. We've built Wikipedia and BitTorrent. Uh, we've built uh, mo most of the reliable technologies that the, the, the rest, including the pile of crap, relies on. 
we have nothing to be ashamed of and we keep on kicking ass on the technological level. I'm, I'm convinced that projects such as, I don't know, and I don't want to, to you know, sound predictive, whatever, but the, the concepts behind Pond, uh, Tails, uh, maybe OTR or what will come next, um, we are we are slowly getting there. I don't know if it will be a freedom box or a gumsticks box or a pitchfork or one of the thousand amazing projects that are booming these days. We should keep on doing that. But doing that alone will not save us and will not save the world. Because when we are targeted, we are targeted. So that's for the technological part uh, where I think we stand. And I mean, I, I mean um, we, we have to take those measures at least because of the intellectual challenge it is. At least because it's fun and because we all want to know how it works. Uh, and because we know it is good practice. We know that all traffic should be encrypted, period. We know that no password should be left in memory. We know that, nah, maybe. Uh, we know that, so we have to, to, to abide by our, our rules. No, I should not use this sentence here. Uh, I, well, we have to do it, right. Then is the political part. Here again, we have a few proof of concept and working code. We've had ACTA, SOPA, and PIPA. We've had the software patents. We have so many tiny victories that weren't even sung about minuscule initi uh, initiative uh, reports or uh, resolutions in the European Parliament, but this doesn't even count. It is all part of setting some kind of strength relationship in this bloody uh, house uh, of the, the, the European Parliament. But still, the most important thing is we can do it. With proof of concept, running code, several instances, minor and major successes, we can hack a bad piece of law when it comes. We're having a, a very significant example in Brazil where we were even able to hack a positive bit of legislation. Marco Civil do Internet is the first time in the world that a legislation is adopted that positively defines freedoms online and positively protects them. This is really something. The final text has its loopholes. The telecom industry may get to massacre net neutrality there like in the rest of the world, but that's another issue. It took three years when intense lobbying blocked the whole thing to a stop until Dilma thought it would be politically opportune for her to put it back on track. So this is not a care bear land. This is not a paradise. But still, even that we can do it. And we must keep on doing it. And that's a good thing. Uh, you, you may know I've stepped aside from my full-time position at La Quadrature du Net, uh, where I've been for six years non-stop, really non-stop, uh, doing these kind of things. It has been amazing. I wouldn't have known uh, three quarters of, of, of you if I hadn't done all of this. But it was time for me to, to step aside and think a bit about all this. And also, uh, we have to make the demonstration that a structure such as La Quadrature du Net can continue and be scalable. And we have no evidence so far that this is the case. Today, we have five people working uh, full-time at La Quadrature du Net. We'll see how it holds. Uh, I hope we'll, uh, we'll, yeah, we'll see that in a, in a near future. That's about the sustainability of our political movements and our political actions. But still, we have evidence that we, uh, we, can, we can do it. What I think is missing is of another nature. It's neither technological nor political. It is about you know, the, the problem sitting between the keyboard and the chair. Uh, I think we became that problem, we became part of that problem, and that this is something maybe deepest than the political and technological layers, because this is something that we haven't explored as much so far. Uh, why does, doesn't any journalist, why doesn't any lawyer, any politician use <coughs> tales today, you know, one year after uh, the, the beginning of the revelations? Why? Not on tails, 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 or, or, or whatever other technology. We we know we've th those crypto parties are one of the most amazing new format for social interactions and uh, social organization that we've uh, found out since the hackerspace. So we are improving that, but still 
we all we all know the the story with uh, Greenwald and, and I, uh, we should project tonight the video where Snowden is giving this 10 minutes course of PGP for journalists with some kind of vocoder voice. It's mwah, brilliant raw sample material, and still it doesn't it doesn't quite work. So I think it is cultural. I think it is social, and I think it is profoundly within the the definition of who we are, of who we are as individuals and who we are as, as society, as societies uh, in, in general and in all its diversities. Um, and I think that because I have the impression that we have become the cyborg. We have become the machine without noticing. For us, we have been fed with those images of the shiny robots, uh, sometimes hunting for Sarah Connor, but that, that were always those uh, autonomous entities. We haven't been accustomed so much at being part of the robots, as the, the, the robots being part of ourselves, as much as we are part of the robots. And I think that this is what happened. I think that this is what is happening, that those uh, last 15 years brought as evolution to, to technology by uh, further away, uh, uh, taking away from us the knowledge of how technology is functioning, we have been turned into the machine, as well as the machine has been turned into us. Or, or phone number records, or um, uh, most emotional images and documents, the, 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 the drafts of what we write, what we create, who we are. It's our identities. It's our intimacies. It's the deepest of what we have. Uh, at the heart of who we are, that is now being part of the machine. What does this mean for ourselves, and what does this mean for society? Um, we've all watched the movie, uh, now it's been 30 years, and I think it is really, really, really a good time to watch again Terminator by James Cameron, the 1984 version of it. We all have in mind the rise of the machine, we all have in mind the day Skynet is going to take over. But once again, in our imaginary, Skynet was this autonomous robotic entity, when what we witness every day is a much more subtle mix, where the, the robots and the companies who own them are merged and increasingly merging with the political systems or whatever is left of them that are supposed to articulate these things together. So this is even uh, subtler, this is even darker as a, as a goulash uh, than it would have been if it was simple, plain, shiny robots coming right on us. This is this dark matter we are fighting every day. And I'm convinced, utterly convinced, that it is about opening this question of the definitions of our very humanities of who we are uh, inside and who we are outside when we interact with each other. And trying to, to delineate the, the, the place of the machine and the place of our humanities. The, there is no interface anymore. The two have merged. The parts of the machine are in us and the parts of us are in the machine. How do we try to draw a line that will, at the same time, uh, respect our fundamental freedoms, enable us to, to take control of uh, our destinies, uh, control of our lives, control of our technology, while at the same time uh, um, nurturing this diversity that is who we are and uh, what we are trying to achieve. Uh, I think there is much research to do in that field and in, in the open discussion, I'd be glad to discuss of this uh, concept of cyber peace. I've been uh, discussing with others for, for some time. But you get, you get the idea here. This is what I wanted to, to put on the table. I hope it fits in your SD card, Dinette. And now we, we'll shut down the, the recording. And I, I really want to, to discuss all this uh, openly with all of us. Please help me make up my, not make up my mind, help me uh, 
uh, progress on, on reasoning on, on that because uh, let's all progress on reasoning on that because as I told you we this is I think only something we can we can do together and well among other pieces of infrastructure to do so we have a uh, uh, warm tea pouring at the tea house and this is of course an ongoing discussion that will never fit in this format